दृष्टाष्टिक विषय विदृष्ण से वशीकार संज्ञा वैराग्य दृष्ट अनुश्रविक विषय विदृष्ण से वशीकार संज्ञा वैराग्य वैराग्य और डिस्पैशन इज दि इंटेलिजेंट कंट्रोल और सब्जुगेशन ऑफ दि इंटेन्स डिजायर or craving for the sense objects that are seen and heard in this video we are going to discuss sutra 1.15 in the last video we discussed sutra 1.14 the three components of practice or abhyasa so now in sutra 1.15 we are going to discuss what vairagya is dispassion because remember abhyasa practice and vairagya dispassion are the two components uh are the path the single path that can be done to still or suppress the mind the chitta or the fluctuations of the mind specifically so abhyasa vairagya abhyam right so here in this sutra we're going to talk about vairagya dispassion so to begin we have sutra 1.15 and it say, says drushtanu shravika vishaya vitrushnasya वशीकार संज्ञा वैराग्य सो वैराग्य डिस्पैशन और डिजायरलेसनेस इज वशीकार संज्ञा वशीकार संज्ञा और वशीकार संज्ञा इज यू ब्रेक इट डाउन टू वशीकार संज्ञा नाउ संज्ञा इज लाइक इट्स लाइक अवेयरनेस और कॉन्शियसनेस और हैविंग प्रॉपर नॉलेज ऑफ समथिंग so you really really know this thing and you have an awareness of it you have a consciousness of it it's a right proper understanding of something so you have here vashikar samnya or sanya so the right proper knowledge of vashikara vashikara or vashikara is like uh subjugating something to your control doing something in a controlled manner having something controlled having something subjugated very intelligently the reason why we're doing it we're saying intelligently is because of sanya so here it is a, it is an intelligent control of something you're not just like pushing it down right you're not suppressing something you're subjugating something putting it under your control but intelligently you're doing it in a in a wise manner so this we can even go deeper into figuring out what does that mean but we'll go into that so vashikara sanya so vairagyam is the intelligent subjugation of something right so drushtanu shravika vishaya vitrushnasya vitrushnasya so trishna trishna means craving hankering like wanting something very badly desire so vitrushna vitrushnasya right of the craving or hankering of something so <clears throat> thus far this passion is the control subjugation of the craving or hankering of something craving after something desiring after something right drushtanu shravika vishaya 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 is a sense object a sense object something that is perceived right by the mind or by consciousness in this case so vishaya is a sense object and then shravika anushravika anushravika means that which is heard something that is heard this is referring to the scriptures either it's the vedas or other scriptures uh that they 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 talk about certain sense objects certain things that one wants to attain so anushravika things that are heard from the scriptures and drushta drushta is the things that are seen so this passion is the controlled subjugate subjugation of the uh desiring after the sense objects that are heard and seen so once again vairagya this passion is you are subjugating you're controlling your desire your hankering right your your extremely strong you know inclination towards sense objects that are heard and that they are seen 
So that's what this sutra means. That's what dispassion is. You have controlled that element of it. So the commentators, uh, specifically Vyasa, Vyasa states in his commentary that here he mentions three specific things, women, food, and power. Now, women referring to, uh, of course, the, the, the uh, lustful desire, uh, also the desire to get into a relationship, also desire to love as we say, whatever it is, it, it most likely includes all of these things. I haven't looked into it very, very specifically, but it would be too presumptuous to just think it's lust because often yogis are seen as renouncing marriage as well and also being a householder. So in this case, just whatever desires that are evoked uh, by women or about women, etc. Right. So we have women, food and drink, right? Your desire for food and drink. Now, obviously, it's not OK. Stop eating, right? It's eat in a certain way where you're not constantly giving into your senses, constantly eating certain types of food that are very, very like, you know, you're trying to satiate your appetite, you know? And so and then power in this case, Aishvaryam is the word Aishvaryam power I'll have to look into but it could mean Siddhis. Siddhis are supernatural powers that later on in the Yoga Sutra they talk about you know one can levitate, one can def uh, defeat his desire for uh, hunger and thirst. One can uh, when one meditates on certain areas of the body they can learn about the entire universe, they can learn about the body, they can read other, pe other people's minds and stuff like that. So there's these, these different powers, these different supernatural powers. So here Vyasa states that, look, women, food, and power, they're very tempting things. They're very, we desire them, we, 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 we have great desire for them, and we crave after them. So these are some examples of things that are seen, the drushta, right, things that are seen. And you want to, when you have achieved vairagya, you are not phased by these things. These things don't bother you. They don't make you restless. You don't become anxious over them. So when you see a person of the opposite sex or whomever you're attracted to, you know, the idea is that it, that, that person's physical appearance, their beauty, their charm, charisma, whatever, doesn't phase you. It doesn't make you go crazy and get attached and, you know, act in like really embarrassing ways or, you know, whatever the case is, you know, whatever happens when we get attached to certain things, you know. And, um, Food also, we eat certain types of food. And so Vyasa is pointing out these things, very specific things here that look, these are the things that we are craving after. And when you get over the craving for these things, you're in Vairagya, you have achieved Vairagya. So the thing is that here you have freedom from sense objects. Now remember, we talked about drushta, things that are seen, and anushravika, things that are heard. Now, the Vedas and the various scriptures, the Vedas, Vedas specifically, um, they, these sacred texts involve a lot of invoking the deities through prayer, uh, through mantras about Agni, the fa fire, God, uh, Varuna, uh, Indra, all these different gods, right, and goddesses. <clears throat> There were prayers and chants and rituals and sacrifices, etc., to invoke the ideas that what happens in this sacred fire will happen also in the universe. So, what happens is some of the prayers, you know, are, Oh, Agni, please transport this offering I have to God. Oh, Indra, please, you know, allow me to win in war. Or please, you know, uh, keep my cattle safe. Or please bring rain, right? So there's all these, you know, or some prayers may refer to uh, getting a wife, you know, getting a good partner. And so what happens is the idea is that some of these things are also very temporary, right? So when you're asking for, you know, a partner, when you're asking for, you know, to keep, you know, to, for progeny, right, for children, etc., you're still asking for material things, right? You're asking for material things, and the idea is that these things, they don't satisfy you. You can get them, and you think you'll feel satisfied, but then you'll keep wanting to keep it, or you'll want more and more and more. And that's the problem here. So, 
the things that are seen refer to the things in the, to in the scriptures that they're saying that you know uh, you can use prayers and certain mantras to achieve these things such as rain progeny uh, you know wife etc but you know, if you want to stay, achieve a state of desirelessness, vairagya, then even those things you don't really want. You want something higher. You want some, the idea is they're implying that it's higher, something beyond the things that you have to re repeatedly, uh, repetitively do again and again and again, right? So, the idea is that we want to, as a yogin in this text, you want to get this understanding to kind of push away from things like this that can lead to further suffering in that way. So things that are seen are the things that, right? These three things and whatever else you can try to like imagine things that, you know, like chocolate is part of food, but anything else like technology, this and that, that you really, really crave and really want. Things that are seen. So, and then things that are heard. Some of the things that are promised in the scriptures that have to do with the repetitive nature of getting them over and over again which are not, it's a yoga works, yoga also works with the Vedas and the Upanishads and all these texts, but they have, dis, they have, they'll have certain disagreements. They'll say, you know, you know, we know that you've been living this lifestyle, you've been doing these rituals and sacrifices, that's good. That's, they're very good activities for yourself and for, you know, the universe and for, you know, whatever else is important. But, you know, if you want to reach a higher state of, understanding and you know not depend on these rituals over and over again then you should slowly start to acquire vairagya or dispassion so we have um let's see so it's freedom from the sense objects and it's very important because in, in a vairagya state you have discriminative knowledge vignana or viveka in this case where you're in this state but you have this discriminative knowledge which i'll explain later but you're able to tell the difference between purusha and prakriti. You're able to tell the difference between consciousness and matter or soul and matter. You're able to tell the difference between those two. So when you see the sense objects, right? When you see someone who's very attractive, when you see food that you really crave, whatever it is, you have, you have such discriminative knowledge that you know that these objects have defects in them. And the defect is most likely that it does not satisfy and it distracts you from a path. So the more you keep engaging in your desires over and over and over again, you know, later on we'll learn that you identify with the body more. And when you identify with the body, then you can't identify with the soul. It's opposite. And you, you identify with your senses and seek happiness or pleasure through your senses. So you, when you acquire discriminative knowledge, you know that the sense objects like food, uh, women, uh, you know, opposite sex or whatever, whoever you're attracted to, um, material objects, whatever, they have defects in them, that they are deteriorating and that they, they're uh, subject to change and they can lead to unhappiness and constant craving and restlessness, trying to acquire them. And then once you think you cross the finish line, then you look at something else and you say, I want that. So when you see these sense objects, when you're in vairagya, when you understand, when you have vairagya in yourself, then you know that these sense objects are not worth it, are not worth seeking, and you decide to seek something else, and that's vairagya. So that state is also called vashikara sangnya, vashikara sangnya, and that state, remember, is the controlled subjugated state where you control that desire. And this word is important because it's not a control that you, once again, suppress something, right? It's an intelligent control from discriminative knowledge. You are controlling from a state of wisdom. You know the defects in these sense objects. And so the yogin does not go, oh, I really crave that beautiful person and then run away and like suppress it. The yogin already knows that this sense object in this case is has a defect in it or this uh, you know this technological thing that I want or this food that I want has a defect it cannot satisfy me and so as of now we have done Sutra 1.15 we'll go on to the next Sutra 1.16 but I hope this helped you know
uh, vairagya is very important abhyasa vairagya this is a very important path because this is one of the means to which you can still the mind or the yogin can still the mind so we'll do sutra 1.16 next and uh, if you feel that this helps please do uh, like the video and subscribe uh, give me some feedback and I'll be mo making more videos so thank you the key terms include vairagya which means dispassion or detachment sangnya which is consciousness, awareness, or knowledge of something. Vashikara, which is control or subjugation. When you subjugate or put something under your control. Vitrushnasya or Vitrushna, Vitrushna, which means freedom from desire or freedom from craving. Vishaya is the sense object. Anushravika is that which is heard, usually referring to scriptures like the Vedas and Drushta which is something that is seen now in the video once again we mentioned Vidrushnasya as craving or desire but in reality Vidrushnasya is one who is free from craving or desire because Drushna is craving or desire so Vidrushna is freedom from craving or desire in this case